Hello everyone and welcome. This is your girl Nicole here, Embodied Goddess Coach and Creatrix of the Goddess Moves. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so happy that you're here. Today we are joined by the wonderful Jolene Hardesey. Uh, Jolene is a fantastic woman that we have um, <clears throat> a alignment with a magazine that we both write for called Birth of a Woman. She offers a beautiful, the actually the summer magazine just came out, go get it. It's amazing. She offered a beautiful um, written piece. And um, <clears throat> Jolene um, is from the Diné Chipwan Cree Nation, Cree First Nation uh, tribe and uh, she is also a mother of four, and she is also the founder and creator of Living Resilient, uh, which is an, an organization that empowers, inspires, and educates. And she's really bringing um, gems and wisdom from the uh, First Nations culture and bringing the, um, the collective wisdom and really bridging the gap so that we can all learn from each other respectively from our cultures but also learn together as we walk through life she is an empowered speaker and i am so honored that we have jolene with us welcome welcome wow i've never heard of myself like being introduced like that before thank you <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my little ego is just floating. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I thought, you know, we got to bring up those receipts and we got to celebrate and big ourselves up. So, you know. Exactly. Hey, like water yourself. That's awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's nice to have, it, so, it's always nice to have that little recogn recognition. And then some, sometimes when you hear the bio, it's just like, wow, I am all of that. Okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, my life has been a journey. That's for sure. It's um, you know, something that that uh, is continuous and ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, actually, when you when you started the introduction with uh, Dene and Chipwan, Dene and Chipwan is my mom. So like my mm -hmm. mother, that's her side, and then my dad is a Cree Indian, actually from. Uh, Wabasca area, mm -hmm. but he also had lived in the Northwest Territories mm -hmm. almost his whole life. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of connection, actually, it's kind of interesting because I grew up Dene. I grew up with their songs and and their culture and, and the drum dances and, mm -hmm. and tea dances and just the gatherings, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I moved... Uh, by the time I got to 13, I moved to Saskatoon, and then I, my dad, my mom went to school for social work there. She got her bachelor's in social work, and mm -hmm. and then she started introducing me to the Cree side, which was really beautiful, because then you started to go to round dances and powwows and, and various events like um, sweat lodges. Uh, let's see, fasting, we went to, we went to sun dances, just so many different uh, ways of connecting, right? And my mom, as a Chipwan woman, um, she always knew, she always had this innate knowing that she had to raise us in that traditional manner mm -hmm. and continue to uh, involve us in, in culture, right? And so ever since we were young, um, we've been surrounded by who we are. And, um, and it's kind of funny because like when you now, when I look at it, like I grew up um, mostly on the land, right? I grew up on the land and in hunting camps and, you know, trapping and fishing and, and even gathering water from the river and, and bringing it up to have a shower or whatever, you know, like those kinds of things. And, uh, and then now, as I got older, uh, I realized how lucky and how blessed I was because, you know, when I, when you're a kid, everybody's like, oh yeah, she's a bush baby. Oh yeah, she lives in the bush. She's probably poor. Mm -hmm. But it's so funny because now those same people are coming to me for advice. Like, hey, how do you actually do this? When you gather from the land, how are you doing this? Right? So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of really like, it went interesting about that, you know, <laughs> that connection really about the connecting to the land. It's, it's, and, 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 and you're you're so true because um you know uh there is a shift in per and a shift in perspective and a shift in awareness of what it what it is to really be connected 
to nature and connected to the land, um, you know, when you grow up in it, and then, you know, the, another perspective would, would might, think of that as, oh, that's dirty, that's, that's unclean, that's, you know, that's unkept. But now it's that's- It's poor, yeah, like yeah, those kind and, of and annotations to it, yeah. Exactly. And now that's, that, that, that kind of is being, that not kind of, it's being reframed as in, oh, there's some, there's, there's gifts here. There is, yes. it's, there is, value there is um roots there is it's not you know because like if you if you're if you live off and from the land you still wash your body and clean yourself just as everybody else everybody wants to be clean but there's there is a there is a simplicity i think to when you have that connection you can still be in a modern house and whatever, but there's still this respect and connection. Um, yeah. So for me, I call it switches. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like there's switches that you could turn on and off. And mm -hmm. when you grow up urbanized and you grow up with the luxuries of constant running water and, and power and stuff, you, you lose that um, almost like consciousness mm -hmm. and awareness of, of how much you're using or what you're using or where it comes from right whereas when i was a kid i knew that exactly three pails of water can wash and rinse my hair right mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that was like that was that was a knowing right and then so when we grew up actually doing like living like that and then going into an urban setting we still had that mindset and i remember my mom constantly rehearsing to us like you know you wet your hair you shut it off you wash your hair you turn it back on you rinse your hair you shut it off you mm -hmm. condition your hair you shut it off and then you you know what i mean mm -hmm. so there was like there was constant uh awareness of, of how that was happening like now i wish i could say i was like that but i'm not i'm mm -hmm. terrible i'm a terrible urbanized indian now <laughs> but, <laughs> but i'm consciously still like it's still kind of in the back of my head and I really have to bring that forward. And, and, uh, even those things, like my spirit just kind of like lets me know, like, actually, no, that's enough. Now you got to stop, or this is, you know, the direction you got to go just yeah. different little, uh, little understandings, I guess that has to come back. And I really have to start working with that, mm -hmm. but to know when not to do is not to know. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I could say, I know, I know, I know, but if I'm not doing it, then technically I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. So just those things, right? Like the understanding of that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. oh, and you also touched in on my business. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I call my business, it's not um, incorporated or an organization as of yet, but I'm hoping to build it so one day it will become such a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, it's just me solo. Uh, I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book on my life events, my healing, uh, my just my experience in life, you know, like, I feel like my story um, of my life and, and the things that I've overcome and the things that I've, I've grown through can become a real value to, to my people and to, and to all people, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's that author piece, like I, I eventually want to get to that author stage, I'm just in the middle of writing right now. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah and then empowerment and speaking and you know sharing my story and sharing the truths like as not pretty as they are but also showing that accepting those truths are are okay you know and to not be okay is to be okay right mm -hmm. and and to learn to love your growth no matter what stage it's in mm -hmm. and um and then all of that usually like it comes back to full circle of of the medicine wheel and what that is to me and so i'm not sure if you're aware of it but the the medicine wheel that we we honor it's like the sacred hoop of life it encompasses everything right and everybody's medicine wheel from every nation uh is is different and so um if but i could the, pause you for a moment the medicine wheel, is it like an actual physical, tangible thing? Or is it, it's like, it's, it's kind of like a, a like a compass. Okay, so 
there's there is drawings of the medicine wheel okay mm -hmm. and it, and that that is a tangible thing mm -hmm. but these are tools they're resources for you to use and for you to understand so in the medicine wheel i wish i had one to show you right now but i don't it's in my stuff i'm sorry okay. but it's, um, it encompasses like it's a four directional wheel mm -hmm. and uh, encompasses the directions with north east south west um it encompasses the the seasons so you know summer winter fall spring mm -hmm. uh it encompasses the stages of life between um infancy to childhood to adulthood to elderhood um it encompasses the medicines um so there's four medicines on that wheel those are the four sacred medicines that were gifted to us by buffalo white buffalo calf woman mm -hmm. and um they have their own significant meaning and value and and um and each nation has their own teachings behind each of them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, those are sweetgrass, sage, tobacco, and cedar. Mm -hmm. And um, but when we look at it, like those are just the, the resources and their guides. They're kind of like uh, reminders of of how to keep yourself well balanced, right? Because there's even like the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual uh, that's in that medicine wheel. So it's an all encompassing wheel, right? Mm -hmm. And to have that wheel and to understand that wheel is one thing to know it, um, but to practice it every day, you know, that it, it really is just a resource to check in. So for me, mm -hmm. I don't have, um, like, I don't go to every, uh, well, hold on. Let's see. How can I compare this? So like, you know how people of Christian faith, they go to the Bible and they open it and then they pray, right? Mm -hmm. For us, when we do everything, even when we pick, um, when we pick anything from the earth, like whether it be, uh, you know, sap from the tree or berries from the ground or, you know, soil from the earth or, or anything or a rock from the ground, mm -hmm. we, we honor those four directions. We honor the energy of mother earth. We, we, um, we usually lay tobacco down or a gift of exchange, like we're paying the earth mm -hmm. and we tell them, you know, like, um, that we're taking uh, a product from their earth and that that we you know honor and respect the energy that goes into that we continue to to honor that full circle right and and to honor that sacred hoop of life and um and that's really what that is and when we pray when you notice uh when our elders pray in sweat lodge or in ceremony mm -hmm. they're praying to all four directions and they pray to it equally they have a prayer that they do um, every prayer is different and every uh every nation every person every person comes with their own energy their own intention their own uh understanding of what this medicine wheel and this hoop is right and so for me uh when i'm doing my own medicine wheel i'm checking in with myself i'm asking myself the honest questions of where i need to be or where am i or how i'm feeling mm -hmm. um my understanding of my spirituality goes deeper than just that wheel like because there's there's the four quadrants and then in the center um they they say that that center that's the piece that all comes together and that's your spiritual side like you're really working with that mm -hmm. that encompassing balance of everything right mm -hmm. and um and so i usually check in with all of them and for me i started to understand that i was a spiritual being before i was human that i was energy before i was flesh and blood mm -hmm. and um and that I had to honor all areas of my medicine wheel, no matter what that was, right? And so for me, when I do my medicine wheel, yeah, I smudge, I do prayer, I do all those things. But the little practices of being honest with yourself, of really connecting emotionally with yourself, being honest with your emotions, like what are they? And allowing that allowance to feel whatever it is, you know, like even if it is on the negative aspect of things, like even those negative aspects can teach you things like the anger, the jealousy, the resentment, like those things, you know, when you look deeper into what those are for you, you start understanding yourself deeper. But not only that, I found when you start doing that with yourself, you're almost understanding your your um, inherent plan here from the creator. So in our culture, we believe that 
we sat with the creator before coming here on this earth mm -hmm. and that we sat there and we told him, you know, this is what I've been through and this is what I want to experience. And so when I will go down, this is who I want to be, what family I want to have, you know, the experiences I want to carry. There's something in there that I want to collect, right? So it's like these collections of experiences and emotions and vibrations that you're coming here to this physical plane to, to really deal with. And then you go back to the creator when your mission is done. Mm. And so that's, yeah. sorry, what? Um, go ahead. Oh, so that's kind of like the understanding of our, uh, like of mine, actually, I shouldn't say our because that encompasses everybody, but, but of my understanding of my teachings when I was taught, you know, from a young age until now and, and, and so on. So oh, that's yeah, kind of how I um, with, with an integration of, of, of the medicine wheel, um, what, how is this two things? There's, there's a lot of gems, <laughs> but two things are, um, I want to bring up. Um, one is, um, how, how, how do you see the role of a woman and, um, like how she is held within the culture. Um, like when you, when you touched on, uh, you know, being, uh, being connected to the land and respecting the land and living off of the land, you know, as, as, as women, um, what, what, how does that, how does that role carry, um, through like as through growing up and like, uh, moving through different stages in life and, so that's one. And then um, you mentioned like the, the, tradi the, the, the rituals and the practices with using sage and um, the prayers. And I think about, you know, as there is this rise of women coming together in circles, in um, rituals and ceremonies, and we use things like sage, we uh, do use the drum, um, they say, um, uh, uh, use, um, integrate lots of different things. And, yeah. oh, sorry, are you yeah. done? No? Yeah, no, and, and is there, are there practices that we, that, that could be, um, honored in a more, um, I wouldn't say appropriate way, but in a more um, uh, ceremonial way that is, that is respective of the culture. So, um, hold on. Uh, so there were so many questions in there. So one of the things before I lose track, yeah. uh, the circle, the encompassing, uh, there was one uh, note that I was going to make there. Um, and even uh, Black Elk speaks it. Um, Black Elk speaks. There's actually a thing, mm -hmm. an author from way back when America was new. Uh, that's where he's from. And he's a medicine man and a carrier, but he talks about how everything in this world wants to come to a circle. Even that pebble that you throw in the, the water <clears throat> vibrates in a circle. Everything wants to come full circle, right? And so that's where I think our, our sacred hoop idea comes from, because everything in this world is naturally a circle. Mm -hmm. And um, and that, that understanding that it's continuous and ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. Uh, the women um, within the culture, we we always hold our women really high, mm -hmm. and and you know, and at one time, our women were the advisors to the chiefs, were the advisors to, you know, their their nation, and and the reason, and even like now, it's the same, but it's kind of gotten um, a little bit lost. Uh, within practice and translation and so in our belief like in what I was taught was that our women are portals from heaven and earth right we're birth givers we um, were connected strongly when white buffalo calf woman came to this earth and she gave medicine she gave it and she gave teachings and she gave understanding okay and and the drum that she gave 
and the pipe that she gave were to the men um, and it was to help their connection to the creator mm -hmm. to help them she showed them different ceremonies different roles uh, women I find have a different um, connecting factor than men and and the reason for that is that we are birth givers we're portals between heaven and earth every month we cleanse you know every month we can feel that pull that gravitational energy uh from the moon you know we can tell when you know weather's changing if you're really connected and working on your medicine wheel these teachings these understandings these these things that you're following like if you're following the moon ceremonies if you're following you know a traditional lifestyle and you're doing little things that kind of keep you connected you'll start feeling because once the student is ready the teacher will appear right and so for me being a woman and really starting to harness things like I feel I notice the way I feel when I'm coming to my moon time which is my period I notice the way I feel when I'm coming to like you know a new moon or a, a full moon or you know these kinds of things within the sky the universe um, when the weather's changing there's almost like your 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 whole being as a woman vibrates differently your dreams vibrate differently your connection to that, that spiritual world and that ability to to dream and have these visions and the understanding that innate knowing uh is different as a woman mm -hmm. and um so at one time when our women used to you know advise the men and, and advise the chiefs it was through that understanding that spiritual knowing that their connection stronger you know that their their wisdom comes from the stars they say uh that that even the ceremonial practices you know like um when we fast when we you know pay the earth when we do uh sharing circles as you know full moon ceremonies we do all these things these practices as women um, it helps your connection and the energy within yourself and in within that room it's different it's a different kind of energy and i mean i can't really explain the difference between the man and the woman but i know that uh just watching you know like the mannerisms and and the the way my husband's growing and, and the way i'm growing it's actually his birthday right now and it's funny because i was reflecting <laughs> yeah, thank you new moon uh, and happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a bunch of crazy in our house <laughs> and um yeah and so you know like just watching his growth and and um and watching how he came to be and he's just such an amazing amazing person mm -hmm. but even in a lot of his growth and my growth, we had fed off of each other and we um, we really relied on each other and our teachings for each other, you know, so that we can grow together. But I know in a lot of respect, um, the, the way I grew and the way that I almost made it mandatory for myself to meet myself at certain stages of my growth almost did gave that same demand to my husband you know like there was many times in our relationship that i'm like hey you know actually you're still doing this in this way and i actually can't do that anymore because i, I see myself in 5 10 15 years over here mm -hmm. and traditionally this is what i want and, and spiritually this is what i want but if you're still doing these things you cannot have the best of both worlds so if you know what you're doing is not wrong and if those are the experiences you want to have that's fine like you know but now we have to make a choice because in 5 10 15 years i see myself here and if you can't see yourself here then then at some point that connection has to be cut right and so that understanding of um of of just guiding of guiding your home guiding your children guiding your husband you know those kinds of things within my healing i found that i took on a whole new role that i didn't really want um wasn't something like oh yeah this is what i'm gonna do mm -hmm. it was more something like i feel it i need it i gotta have it and this is where i'm going right and then it's like uh doing the boundaries and i don't like calling them ultimatums 
-hmm. but just the understanding, you know, like this is where I'm going. This is where I want to be. This is where you are. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is where I need you to come to. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then watching that growth happen. Um, Yeah. So there's, sorry, what? I said, that's beautiful. It's beautiful to have that, you know, that to have that um, dual communication and dialogue within a partnership um, and to, yeah. to be able to grow together, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's funny. Like I, I talk to my friends and they're like, Oh yeah, that's so rare. What you have is rare. But and, and as much as I, I brag about it and I talk about it, I don't, I don't like bragging about it, but I, I like talking about it. Right. And, um, and it's like that and we do have our bad days but Mm -hmm. at the same time at the end of it it's like we've never had such a bad day where you regress for 10 years ago you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and and you're not that it's it doesn't ever get that ugly which is which is nice which Mm -hmm. is beautiful but Mm -hmm. but to be able to have that growth and that understanding and I think now you know like um one of the biggest pieces I found between me and my husband was the, um, the non-alcohol factor, right? Uh, so I quit drinking and really started my journey about, I think it was 2015, so about five years ago now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it was after a year of being substance, substance-free of all kinds, um, I realized that my life was different, that it was almost like this switch was turned on Mm -hmm. and I wanted different. I was thinking different. I needed different. I wanted, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things that I'm like, no, no, no. Like I have to get going. I have to do this. Like my spirit was calling. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and while I was doing this, actually, my husband never stopped drinking until 2017. And and I mean, like he was never really a drinker, you know, but he Mm -hmm. had a beer with supper or if we went out, he had an occasional beer, you know, those kinds of things. And, uh, and I remember actually my mom was going through a surgery and we thought she was, we were going to lose her. Mm -hmm. And we went for a drive, me and my husband. And I told him, you know, in 15 years, I said, I would like to be sitting with my people in communities. I would like to be, you know, holding my own ceremony. I would like to be, you know, attending a sweat lodge or even running a sweat lodge. I would like to be, you know, guiding my people and helping in that way. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I cannot do that with you if you're drinking with the community. And I'm like, and what you're doing is not wrong because he's not like drinking like an alcoholic or some crazy person but he still like those worlds don't mix Mm -hmm. those worlds will never go together Mm -hmm. and um and so I told him I said you know like what you're doing is not wrong I know like you have a handle on it but it but for me spiritually uh and working with medicine and working with everything Mm -hmm. it goes deeper than just that Mm -hmm. right and and I said I can't be a hypocrite because even now when you look at those people that are doing that thing you know like you know going to communities but then still drinking with them or you know hanging out and partying and you know those kinds of things you're like whoa I thought you were cool but are you know I thought you were this way but you're not Mm -hmm. um that wasn't something I ever wanted tied to my name Mm -hmm. and um and so when I explained that body yeah it's uh it's definitely like two-faced, right? It's kind of like, were you helping our people or what were you doing? Right. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, and um, yeah, and I've never wanted to do that. And so when I told my husband that actually, it was kind of funny because I remember I seen his face and his, his eyes went up and he was like, wow, I didn't know you knew, like, I didn't know that that's what you, did. I didn't know that that was the end result. I didn't know that this had an impact that way. Mm-hmm. And it, he was like, okay he said I'm done and uh like that he was done right and Mm -hmm. and it took like a whole year of transition and I remember like watching his growth Mm -hmm. through that and then exactly a year later he phoned me Mm -hmm. and he just sounded chipper he sounded happy he sounded whatever Mm -hmm. and um and then the very next day now he phoned me back and he was like you know what he was like I realized that yesterday has been exactly a year Mm -hmm. since I really just 
put away everything. Mm -hmm. And he's like, but I want different. I need different. My dreams are different. Things are happening. Like, Mm -hmm. like that connection, that light switch went on in his brain. And it was just so exciting to see. And I remember being like, yeah, now you can see where I'm going. Now you see that vision. Now you, you know what I mean? And it was like that sharing of, okay, this is what we're doing. And then, you know, from that point, I know it's only been three years now, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's just been so beautiful and so much growth and, and even like, just life is different. Life has changed. And, uh, and then knowing that I helped guide in that way as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, um, like it matters. It really matters. And it does make a change. Uh, you mentioned I'm a mother of four. I am a mother of four. I have three sons and one daughter and even watching my sons grow up and watching my daughter, it's like night and day, right? My, my daughter's 12 and she's like a little mama. Mm-hmm ever since she was little, you know, and now that she's beginning to get uh, to the woman stages of life, we have been including her in the full moon ceremonies, in the talking circles, um, in just the things that I I do, right? Like when I go and work with communities, when I empower people, like she's there, she's with me. Um, And how is that? Like, how is she receiving? um, How old is, how old is your daughter? She's 12. She's 12 and a half. So how, so she's so she's just coming into that that phase and how is how is she like as I, I think about uh, young women young girls especially in this in our time now um, moving through uh, like uh, uh, transitioning into that young woman phase. And now, and then when you come from a culture that's so deeply rooted, um, and then and integrating that with our modern society, how is, how is she, uh, like, is she, how is she uh, um, uh, weaving in all of this stuff for herself? And is she asking questions? Is this like becoming like an open dialogue where, um, you know, where, where you get to, um, share that that type of wisdom and have it being openly received yeah um you know actually watching her grow has been very very beautiful um my whole spiel in life is to share my journey right and so when i was doing that with my kids i shared everything like how i grew up i shared uh my sexual abuse as a child. I shared what that did to me, how that impacted me. I shared um, the stages of how I felt and where I was. So when she was growing up, it was really interesting to watch because I shared that with all my kids. It wasn't just my daughter. It wasn't, you know, like I shared it with all of them. But for my oldest son, actually, it gave him a more understanding and respect. For him, he's now 15. Uh, I know, I know that consciously he's more aware of different things. Now my daughter at the age of 12, um, those kinds of things, uh, she, she understands like the, um, you know how somebody wants to grow up so fast, right? Like the sexual kind of whatever, Mm -hmm. that is not a thing with her. Like she's not trying to fast forward that. And I think, you know, part of my story has helped understand like, Oh, okay. That could actually do real damage, you know? And, um, and so now when she started to get older, I was like, okay, like, yeah, she's getting it. She's growing. She's almost like this perfect little girl. She's, she's got it. She, uh, you know, even in the culture piece, she's had the, the, um, the privilege of living the life, you know, uh, seeing trap lines, doing those kinds of things on the land, uh, doing culture things with sweat lodge, with ceremony, uh, with powwows and round dances. So that stuff has always been a part of her because we've included it in her upbringing, right? Like she, we've been going to these events. Mm-hmm. Now, um, it was actually about a few months ago, I was actually thrown off because I found out that she was self-harming and, mm-hmm. um, And so those kinds of things. And I remember uh, there was an incident at school. I ended up talking to her. She shared with me she was self-harming. And it was funny because even before she shared with me and the incident at school happened, the principal called me. I had the talk with the principal and I got off the phone. I was fuming. I was mad, right? Like there was a whole thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And then I was just hopping in the shower and I was like, hey, no, recollect yourself. She's not here. There's no point in putting that energy out there, getting worked up. 
being that extra angry while she comes home, you know, and then escalating it because she knows she's in trouble, mm -hmm. but you got to calm yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I had to really start working. And as I was done feeling what I needed to feel crying in the shower, uh, I actually got out of the shower and I heard, ask her about cutting herself. Mm. And I was like, what, where did that come from? Like that was just so out of the blue, not necessary, had nothing to do with what was happening, you know, mm -hmm. didn't even have to do with the incident. And it was funny because like, this is what I heard. She came home. I was like, okay, this is it. Like, I, I can't trust you anymore, blah, blah, blah. She got in trouble. Now, later on that day, when I took her back downstairs and we started talking, she actually shared that piece. Mm -hmm. And it was like, when she shared that piece of self-harming, mm -hmm. I was like, what the, mm -hmm. like, my guides knew the energy knew I was told clearly as plain as day as you and I are talking, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to connect it because I'm like, where did that come from? You know what I mean? Right. And it wasn't until she actually shared with me that that truth was like there and there was nothing I can do. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember just how hurt and how broken and even now talking about it, like still chokes me up. But, um, but just that piece that I was like, wow, you know, like I, I had no idea that that you were doing that, you know, and, and, and I asked her why, and it was just like a collection of depression. It was a collection of, you know, feeling that get disconnect from her biological father. You know, she has, uh, she's, my husband and I have been together since she's been about two years old. So he has raised her, mm -hmm. but she has had, um, a relationship with her, with her biological father, which actually has ended a couple years ago or a few years ago and it was to you know nobody's fault but it just just ended there you know he's still alive he's still there he's just not connected so those kinds of things and that, that have impacted her throughout her little story um those kinds of things were weighing her down and then the self-harming factor I asked her like how did you learn that where did you get that from because I never I never knew that was a thing especially not in our house right mm -hmm. and um and hold on, my nosy son is coming here. You could hear him just stomping down. Hi. I'm in a meeting. You want to say hello? Hello. Okay. Hello. You've got to go upstairs. i got to finish this. What, what is that? What is it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're lucky. So yeah, but you can have, like, that for, first of all, I mean, like, kudos to, I mean, to you, uh, and, and oh, so hold on, just wait, before yeah. you start, I actually wanted to finish it because, um, so after she said what she was doing, I asked her where she, she learned it from, right? Yeah. Uh, when, when she told me um, that the friend she had actually is a foster kid, and she actually gave her a little vial and it oh. had a blade in there and mm -hmm. gave her some rubbing alcohol, mm -hmm. told her how to cut and where to cut and, mm -hmm. and you know, when like, I don't even know, like was giving her life advice on this. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, so when my daughter was sharing this to me, I was like, wow, like I, I had no idea that that was even a thing, you mm -hmm. know, like not with you. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it was a thing with, you know, people did that and it was just a form of release and whatever I said, but, but, you know, I was like, I, it, it hurts me in a different level. I said, because, um, because I've, I've done so much healing in my own work that, that I really tried to prepare you. Mm -hmm. And so that you wouldn't have to go through these hard phases, right? As, as hard as you're doing it right now. And I said, but then I realized, you know, having this little discussion with her, I said that no matter how hard I try as a mother, as a leader, as, as a caregiver, mm -hmm. I could never fully avoid these things with you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, now it becomes a responsibility of your own and a conscious awareness of of what you're doing to yourself and how is that going to impact you for the rest of your life? And these scars are now going to follow you and, and how are you going to deal with the questions? And, and I'm like, you know, I went through so much in my life with, um, you know, being a coming, a single mother of three, uh, when you guys were young, you know, to being sexually abused as a child to being just everything that comes with the confusion of growing up. Right. And I was like, but never once did I want a, an ugly reminder of that on my arm, you know, and I said, and it's not, uh, I'm not getting mad or, you know, making you feel less than because you have it. I was like, I just want you to know that I really, really thought that we were heading in a different direction here. I said, but the experience that you're creating for yourself 
and the experience that I'm providing you now come between two different things, I said. And this little girl, I said, that has been guiding you, which is her friend from foster care, I said, um, I was like, now you really got a choice here. I said, you ought to make up your mind. And, and at the end of the day, like, whether I trust you or don't trust you or whether I'm, you know, whatever, working with you, um, I said, it comes up to a responsibility for you. And I said, and this is where you have to mature now and make your decisions. I said, you could, I could provide this lifestyle for you in this environment and this creation of what I'm doing, or you can tell me what you want. And if this experience that you're having with us is not the experience that you want to experience, like, you know, your friend that's moving from home to home, you know, I said, then maybe we can work something out with social services and that we can get you the experience you're looking for, right? Because it's all about experience in this life. Right. And it sounds harsh to give up as a mother. And it sounds harsh to say that to your child. But I think it really helped her understand like, whoa, actually, I am I'm doing my yeah. well. You know, and, and what I, yeah, and what I have is very blessed or, you know, or even if it wasn't something that she wanted, it was like that, that almost that those honest questions needing the honest answer, mm -hmm. you know, of, of where I'm going now with my healing and what my journey is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And so those kinds of things, uh, that was actually one of the biggest lessons that I've had with her. Mm -hmm. And then watching her grow from that point to where she's at now um, has been really beautiful because she knows that being honest is not just honesty with me and her and me and her dad or, you know, like the mother daughter type of respect that you like, Oh, don't rock the boat, but just say a lie and we'll stay undercover. And it's okay. You know, <laughs> like, like those kinds of things that I kind of grew up with where I was like, Oh man, now I can tell you the real story now that I'm older and you can't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, those kinds of things, that's kind of something I wanted to avoid with my children. And, um, you and then the so foundation yeah right and and not with fear not with not with um you know being a bully or, or finding that I'm up here and she's down here like I've always wanted to be level with my children right and mm -hmm. and I I wanted to meet them at a friend level but I also wanted to meet them at a guidance level like where I wasn't just your mom that I wanted to be here when you're hurting, but I also want to be here when you're laughing, you know, like those kinds of things. And then really just trying to love their way through it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, what are some um, of the lessons that you have learned um, through, you mentioned um, going through um, sexual abuse and then you, and, and you've also mentioned like some, the healing um, that you have gone through in your journey. Um, like if you were to, you know, if you were to see yourself um, at your daughter's age, right? Like at 12 and I still remember are, that, yeah. yeah, and here you are and you're like, you're talking, you're, you're your grown self. What are like, what are some of the one or two lessons that you have learned through that journey that you would tell your younger self? You know, honestly, just to not take life too seriously, that your brain as a, like, I actually follow neuroscientists, mm -hmm. and they are uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza and Dr. Bruce Lipton. Mm -hmm. I follow their studies quite often. And so understanding the brain and the neuroscience behind it, mm -hmm. I learned that your human brain doesn't actually go through all the awarenesses of phases of awareness until after the age of 28. Mm -hmm. So by the time you hit 30 and 32, you really start piecing your life together differently, like a puzzle. And you're almost like looking back at like, Oh, that's, that's what that means. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that that hurt actually stemmed from this and this and this and this. You're no longer looking at yourself as a victim, right. Or, or, um, something that was just hugely impacted. You start asking the whys and the hows and, and, you know, looking deep. Uh-oh. Turn your... We are dealing with, there we go. My mom just tried to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Her ears are just ringing. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> so, yeah, so after the age of 32, your mind and uh, your phases of awareness start making sense a lot differently. So you start really going through these things and you start understanding why. 
you know, like in your life just clicks differently. So, so don't take life too seriously, you know, let yourself make the mistakes and, and troubles that you need to. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, don't be so hard on yourself, you know, like, like, so those kinds of things, when I started really raising my kids, I realized, yeah, you're not going to get it. And even explaining to them and telling them and hoping they understand, but that connection piece that, that almost like the neuroscience of it all, like the actual like neurons that fire together and wire together, those aren't going to stay there until they're really ready. Right. It's almost like in one ear and out the other. So those kinds of things, like, um, I find even the understanding between men and women in that little piece, there totally Mm -hmm. different. Because for me and my kids, I tell them, but I'll tell them again and again and again. And I don't really get tired of telling them until I really get tired of telling them. And then they're like, whoa, you're crazy. Yeah. My husband tells them twice or even once. And he's like, I already told you. And then his next level, like, mm-hmm. anger management skills kind of is like, it's like, like there's, hey, more pati- there's more patience on one hand, you know. Uh, yeah, when, right? When and then yeah. and, and it's like, yeah, same thing. Like all the men in my family are the same. They, they want, they don't like to do it to repeat more than once. Twice, exactly. you, you're lucky, you know, go beyond that. And then, <laughs> and then you know, the head's going to explode and, and, and that's it. No, it's not happening. Yeah, it's definitely something. And it's funny because like, I'm like, you know what? Don't hold my kids to a higher standard than you hold yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a piece Ooh. that I always okay my husband. Right there that's 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 a that's a that's a statement that's a statement right there because we're like <laughs> as, we, as we go through life you know we oh. do stuff and we want and uh, we either teach or we learn um, and we integrate it's just yes you know you if we want the people around us to level up we also have to level up as well. Um, yeah. 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 Oh yes. my goodness. Um, <laughs> there, there's so much we can unpack <laughs> as, as we come to a close. I'm like, I was an hour already. I'm like, dang. I don't know. Right. I was like, wow, that was crazy. <laughs> um, I kind of want to, there's two things I want to, I want to leave us off on. Um, because you gave like, you gave us so much and within the culture and within just like the, um, the, the awareness, like the, the, like the real presence, what it, what it, feel, what it is to, to be present and to know and to not know and just to kind of roll, to roll with it. And then to also to have that collective, beautiful um, uh, dialogue within relationships, within your, par- your beloved and your, your children. Um, when, um, is, are there things that, is if if they could if there's one thing that we could um, we could do within the rise of women's circles and gatherings that because there is a lot of integration of different cultures that are being used in in um, ceremonies if there's one thing that that we that we could do more respectfully um, what okay. is that? So I think actually that was a question you asked earlier and I realized I didn't answer that, but sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm a yapper. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, honestly, cultural appropriation is a thing. And I feel like our, our people and our history have so much to offer, mm-hmm. but um, I'll, uh, uh, it is for our people. And, and, and for those things to use, um, you know, in terms of medicine and women and ceremony, uh, every culture, you know, including even European culture, African culture, uh, you know, indigenous culture, Chinese culture, those kinds of things, they have their own ceremony, right? They have their own ways of doing things. They have their own ways of connecting. Uh, I urge you to actually like look into your culture have an understanding of the medicines, the the ways that you guys do things, the things that you pray, um, the cultural appropriation, especially with ceremony. I'm sorry, my washer and dryer just went mm-hmm. off. Um, it, it's a huge thing, and people don't uh, 
people don't look highly on it. And the reason is, is because, you know, you're seeing a lot more of it now, people coming um, with teachings from our culture and then turn around and try to, uh, let's see, commercialize them or, you know, um, make something into a business, you know, uh, offer that ceremony, even our medicines, you know, watching them be sold in stores, watching them be sold in, uh, airport shops, those kinds of things They like, they matter to us. And the reason is, is because when you're picking your medicines, you're picking them and you're understanding that connection that you have to the earth and that that plant has to the earth. You're paying the earth directly. You're praying for regrowth. You are honoring the system of growth and the, the, you know, you're honoring all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, Let's see with urbanized Indians, when we go to like, let's say Helford and Hyde's and we go and buy medicine, even though we are buying our sage and our sweetgrass or our cedar there, um, if you can't go out and pick it yourself because you do need it, mm -hmm. we still bring tobacco when we still offer it. There's a little offering plate there and you're still praying. You're still giving that thanks for the picker, for the, you know, for the person who provided the medicine for the earth that where it came from you're still honoring those systems right and the the store that we're buying it from also takes that offering and it still does that ceremony for us mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so these little like these little pieces of understanding within our medicine those kinds of things they go deeper than just uh going to the store and paying five dollars you know for a bushel of of sage or whatever you know like it's more than five dollars obviously <laughs> but you know, kinds of things right mm -hmm. um now within ceremony every culture no matter where you're from they follow the same things that we follow right like the 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 13 moons they follow that they follow the energy within the earth they that the truth and that understanding baseline of education not education but of of spiritual knowing those kinds of things all run on the same kind of vibration and your teachings in your own culture and in our culture they bring you to that same place of understanding okay mm -hmm. that same vibration is what you're trying to get to um so yeah, just yeah. be conscious, you know, like it's, it's nice to participate. Like if you ever came to, uh, let's say a powwow or a round dance and they have pipe ceremony and they invite, invite people in, mm -hmm. um, it's nice to participate and you can go and participate there, honor those things. Um, understand that when you come to any indigenous, uh, um, ceremony that women are asked to wear, uh, either a wrap around their their bottom half mm -hmm. or a skirt and it's just to honor your womanhood to know that you are a sacred being there's usually in every ceremony there's a certain place that you have to sit as a woman or um certain protocols that you have to do right uh if you don't know in each ceremony please ask um you know don't be afraid to ask everybody's willing to give you some direction uh there's and with that asking too, I think it's important to also be mindful of who you're asking. Because before you go up to somebody, it's almost like you could feel that energy or that, you know, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't ask. Go with those guidance because not everybody in any culture is open to sharing those secrets with an outsider or with somebody that's just asking, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas opposed to, you know, when you go to somebody and you're like, oh, this actually feels safe. I think I'll get the answer from her. And you ask and then they openly share like, oh, actually, this is what's happening. And then they share what's happening. You know, what the songs mean, what the announcer's saying, what they're doing during the ceremony, those kinds of things. But be the judge, understand how to listen to that small voice in your head and know when and where to ask is is a good lesson there because sometimes you know people are like oh yeah I asked but then so and so got mad at me and they got really rude or they looked at me funny or you know those kinds of things but I think a big part of that has to do with um one you're asking the wrong person because that person either doesn't know or is too scared there's a fear there something's blocking where they just can't share you know what I mean because of either previous history with whatever or the understanding that not every outsider is here to learn or here to not judge you know like 
our culture, our history, our people have been through so much where it was illegal to practice ceremony, where it was illegal to do dances, to, you know, have large gatherings. Um, and these realistically aren't that long ago. Mm-hmm. Like it was in my grandmother's time. It was in my parents' time, you know, like yeah, yeah. it's still very fresh within our culture. And so to see, to have it go from that such oppressive state to all of a sudden now being open, And then to watching uh, on social media and even YouTube and just different things like that, how it's being commercialized and then turning into this Western craziness, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, and so for that, I think, you know, cultural appropriation really is a big thing. Uh, You have to really be mindful of that Um, to everybody in any culture has, has their own way of doing things and and that should be honored and looked at first if you really don't want to feel like you're overstepping maybe go back and see how your culture uses sage or what your culture does with that you know uh, i was actually really um blessed to have made connections on in the muslim community and so when i was sharing what i was doing with my sage it was kind of funny because she was like, what do you do with that? Drink that in tea? And I said, no, actually, I said, I burn it. I, I burn it and I smudge and I showed her. And, mm-hmm. and she said, that's so funny. She said, I add that in my tea to make, uh, she said, to make it taste better. She mm-hmm. said, it's like an enhancer, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's so weird. She's like, you want to try it? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just never see myself putting sage in tea. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, it tastes so good. And so she's going on and on. And then, you know, being able to have those connections, the openness uh, mm-hmm. into what you're, you know, into different cultures and how they pray, that was really beautiful. Um, and to honor that and to be able to recognize that, because I think, um, uh, like, um, I, for, for me, I find myself, I'm a student of learning about and respecting, you know, um, different things about different cultures. And so if I incorporate it in, let's say, um, I incorporate it in uh, in a workshop or something, I will very specifically say, you know, because this is not my culture and to give respect to it and say, Mm -hmm. this is from X, Y, and Z. I learned it from X, Y, and Z. And this is how I was taught to uh, do use what not to just give it cultural um, um, respect um, uh, to, to, uh, to whatever it is that I'm sharing. So it, there's actually, a, 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 um, there's that, that, that carrying on of the knowledge of yes. where it's from instead of just, um, you know, you do like, let's say smudging, you do the smudging or you do the drum um, and there's not an explanation of why, where did that come from? Why are you saying that? You know, um, I think, I feel it's really important to, especially with very specific practices to say where it's from, to give that culture its respect. Yes. Um, you know, actually, while you're saying that there was one tidbit that I was going to share with you, uh, you know, in our Dene culture, I was raised Dene, Chipwan Dene, and in our culture, our women never touch drums, just the men, okay? Mm. Um, when our women played hand games, uh, I mean, our women never played hand games until recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, hand games is almost like a little gambling game where you hide a rock, a tiny little pebble. Uh, there's a big, like a little kind of shuffle and dance you do, and then somebody points. There's certain hand signals that you know how to, whatever. And uh, our women never, ever played with the men. It was always strictly a man's game, okay? Um, Growing up now, I always knew that because my parents raised us traditional, okay? Mm -hmm. So now understanding the teachings that we just don't, uh, that was something that I always kind of grew up with. Now when I got to about 30, I remember praying one day and I asked, you know, why? Because people are always being like, oh, that's misogynistic. That's, you know, uh, it's always a man's world and blah, blah, blah. And there was always like this hate going on, this little shade going on, you know? (laughs) And I remember praying and I asked, what is that? Like, why, why did they do that? What's happening? And um, 
and it came back to the root knowing the understanding the knowledge the teaching of of what was our gift and what was their gift uh, with the drum the drum was gifted to the men to create that same mother earth heartbeat so that they can connect that vibration can be strong that their prayers will be heard there's certain songs that were given to them that that would be a, an instant connection that that was theirs right and that they could teach from man to man to man from you know boy and stuff and and then that would help them in their journey that was a gift from them or from the creator to them now with our women we can cleanse so we didn't have to have that mm -hmm. however our women was gifted drums um through i don't even remember uh but um but our women do drum but the thing is is that if i own a drum mm -hmm. i have to make that drum mm -hmm. i have to use that drum and no man can play on that drum mm -hmm. it's my drum right my intentions my prayer my voice my energy is within this drum to help my connection and my my uh, establishment with that okay so now i was understanding those on a spiritual level with the games the hand games and stuff with our women we were not never allowed to play because our psychic knowing our abilities of just knowing was mm. an, an unfair advantage to the man mm. Do you understand? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's why women and men never mix like that because the spiritual connection, it always comes back to your spiritual knowing your gift mm -hmm. and some gifts are strong in people and some gifts aren't. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing with a woman, it's almost like you'll lose every time because they just know, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and so those kinds of <laughs> right? Oh, and so those yeah. kinds of things, those understandings, it was it was more now than just misogynistic. It was it was the understanding of knowing that you are powerful. You're a powerful creative being and that your energy, your medicine is uncomparable to that of a man, to that of another woman, you know, because you have your own gift. Um, with our women now, when we collectively get together, uh, we know that, we share, like, this is my gift, this is what I come with. I actually was just recently in um, a full moon ceremony, mm -hmm. and I, I love the ceremony. Oh man, it was such a good ceremony. It lasted a long time. I was so blessed to be there. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed now is funny because as the ceremony was wrapping up, it was like I could hear, just wait, you're going to see something. And I was like, what am I seeing? But as that ceremony came to a close, things were put out, uh, things were put away, the lights came on. Those same women that I sat in the circle with were not the same women that were so raw and vulner vulnerable and open and honest as they were in the ceremony it was almost like this instant guard came up this like oh my god don't look at me like it was it was a lot of different things with these women mm -hmm. and i remember being like wow is that what i was gonna see <laughs> right mm -hmm. and uh and it was almost like the shield came back on each one of them mm -hmm. and so you know, so when you are sharing ceremony, sharing songs, sharing, you know, who you are, it's really important to be that honest with yourself so that you're the same person, whether you're turned off the lights or turned on the lights, right? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't feel so scared mm -hmm. with the same people in that same group after the lights go on. It's like a transformation. It's like a shift. Like when you go through um, those, the, the circles, um, and when you're with other women and, and you said it so eloquently and beautifully, like to realize not so much it's a hierarchy between men and women. It's just knowing that what, what we carry as women is, is unique and powerful. And yeah. just as we honor everybody uh, in our space, we also take that deep honoring um, for ourselves and which is, is such um it's such a powerful realization and we like listen like jolene we could just like like chit like talk and just like go into a whole <laughs> bunch we have a segment at the end of our uh, at the end of um <laughs> real and raw that uh we just um it's called rapid fire questions i'm just gonna okay. ask some uh questions and their the response is one word and like, <laughs> as as okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got you. 
Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. One word to describe being a woman. Beautiful. The age your moon came. Twelve. Who taught you, who was the first person who taught you about sex and intimacy? Uh, my mom. One silly thing about you. Uh, uniquely. <laughs> okay, fill in the blank. I love. Myself. I am. Beautiful. First Nations people are. Amazing. The goddess is. Powerful. And so it is. Jolene, thank you so much for being here. How can people find you? Uh, I operate on Facebook. Uh, eventually, I would like to get my YouTube channel on. But uh, I'm Jolene Hardesty. That's how you can connect with me. And then, uh, and then we can go from there. I started my page. I just haven't fully committed to my page. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there in the cosmos. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and uh, your presence. It's truly valued. Uh, appreciate you so much. And blessings to you, your husband, and your kids. And uh, yeah, uh, stay well, stay healthy, and safe. Much love to you. Yes, ditto to you too. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry that we might not have gotten to every question. <laughs> That's okay. We got to do like a segment, like a series one. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed my time. Um, I wish you the best and uh, I hope it's so good for you. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for watching. Stay healthy and well. And until the next time, take care, everybody.